One thing I've noticed over the last few weeks is that more and more people are consuming content that is just absolute trash. And they're wondering why they feel like trash, why their results in their life and their business are trash. And I think the world around us is engineered a bit to reinforce this. If you look at the majority of the shows on Netflix, not all of the shows, but the majority of the shows are very kind of trash TV-ish. A lot of people arguing dramas and drama by definition is like people arguing about stuff and suspense and emotional polarity. And of course it's entertaining because we get sucked into that world and that's cool. We, my wife Melissa and I, we watch a show of some kind almost probably every other night, either during dinner, after dinner, just to wind down. And I think personally, my opinion is like, that's fine. It's just a nice mental escape from uh, needing to really think and that, that's especially if you're actually doing productive work during the day. And I think as with anything, we got to understand when to use a tool and when not to. I think as with anything, it can be over consumed, overused. And if you are scrolling on, I forget who said this term doom scrolling, where you're just constantly scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through just random shit on social media, or if you're binge watching a show about something that isn't necessarily the most uplifting or productive thing, uh, and you're watching not just like one episode, but like two, three, four, five, binging, uh, and in between you're on your phone consuming essentially trash. Don't expect to do well or feel good. And it's easy to get sucked into it because it doesn't take really any effort or energy to get sucked into that and start consuming all of those things. It doesn't take any thought. And so my wife and I, we just had our, our first child, a boy uh, named Jordan. And so Melissa is pretty much a full-time stay-at-home mom. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to essentially retire her a few years ago. And she she's just like changing them, feeding them, hanging out. And so she just got on this train of watching just some of the trashier Netflix type shows that are just, I'll say, the, the weird dating shows and whatnot, which is cool in, in moderation and is uh, entertaining, especially the ones that are just like, they, they put shows on there that are like Down Syndrome and Autism dating shows. How they're getting away with that, I don't know, but I digress. Uh, so stuff like that, right? And so it doesn't really add anything to her life. And so not to mention like the, the hormones that she's been dealing with and whatever, and I totally get it. So I haven't said anything and she's really, in control of things like she's very stable we'll just put it that way but i noticed the consumption when you're sitting around doing nothing and you have a kid in your hand and you literally can't do anything it's just really easy to flip on some trash and be distracted and, and entertained for an extended period of time but we noticed that her emotions were getting more and more swingy to the negative side and i said well i don't know if this is has anything to do with it but what I have noticed is that the shows that you're watching are mainly shows around people arguing and stuff. I think one of them was like, it was Love is Blind or something like that. Anyway, every time I walk downstairs, that show would be on, for example, and there would be people just yelling at each other and arguing about just like dumb, petty shit, which is, that is like trash TV. And I don't care unless, until it starts like affecting her livelihood, which affects my livelihood. So I said, I don't know if this is, has anything to do with it, but I think that have you thought about potentially like consuming something different during the day and she's like what do you mean i said well are you consuming anything as it relates to something around you know something positive not just you can do it motivation but just something that is more constructive and she goes yeah that's a good point i totally dropped that out and i'm like because of all the downtime it's like a perfect opportunity to feed yourself with that type of uh, mental diet and i said like for me i'm constantly protecting my i'll say my mental state if you will and i'm if i take uh, our dog charlie for a walk like alone i will play an audiobook i will play an audiobook many times to and from the gym sometimes even at the gym um while we go to sleep at night if we put on a sleep timer, something like of a spiritual nature. So something, I'll, I'll go through my audible library here. So like at night, we'll listen to, right now we're going through the Law of Attraction audio collection by Esther Hicks and Jerry Hicks. I got the Ultimate Jim Rohn library on here. 
which is 18 hours of Jim Rohn speeches. There's The Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham, and that might be something that I'll listen to first thing in the morning. When I get up early, I'm usually up somewhere between 4 and 5.30. I'll come up here, just wake up, have a cup of coffee, listen to an audiobook for maybe 60 minutes, just chill over here on, on that couch, and just relax, wake up. But at night, we'll listen to things like we got Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. We've got, let's see, Money and the Law of Attraction by Esther Hicks and Jerry Hicks. We'll go through The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. Everything by Stuart Wilde. So we have the book Miracles. We got The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. So at night, we'll just we'll make sure that we're listening to something because if we don't, at least if I'm left alone in silence, or if you're left alone in silence, what I found is like your thoughts tend to wander places that you don't really want them to go. And so the mind likes to go and get scared of stuff and project things that usually aren't necessarily really that helpful or productive. Sometimes they can go to creative places, but I found that any sort of downtime mentally is usually either gets sucked in by something that we don't want or just overall it just ends up being a waste of time or in time not best used properly. And I'm gonna make another video on specifically best uses of time. But what we do is essentially now, she, over the last couple of weeks, she's been, she got like some book on, I don't know, mothering and some like the psychological side of that. And then she's step mood and her everything has dramatically improved. And so there's just, I think what's been helpful for us, at least maybe it'll be helpful for you, is having like just a something that you can open up on your phone and just put on that is constructive, that continues to feed yourself with stuff that isn't necessarily like positive or motivational, but just stuff that like doesn't allow the, I'll say the negative shit or the dramatic shit to sink in. And I know so many families, they just have the news on in the background constantly. It just is funny. My Melissa's family was here for a few days, a, a few weeks ago. And they always, we joke, they always have the fucking news on. And they turned on the news at our house downstairs. And I'm like, nah, that, sorry, that we don't do the news here. And I, I made some sort of a joke about it, but I don't want that shit in my house. I don't want to hear about the shootings and the stabbings and the bullshit that, you know, like why the, I, I get why that's the news, but unless we're conscious about what we're feeding ourselves, we're susceptible to just about anything. And so I have had a great experience with the more control that I take over my environment, what I feed myself mentally and what, what goes into my senses. If I'm conscious about that, things tend to go well. I feel as though I have control over it. And ultimately, I, like, I feel better about myself going through my day knowing that I'm feeding myself good stuff, which then like builds, I'll say, just self-esteem to a degree. And versus you listen to people argue on some trash TV for a while, it's really tough to like feel great about yourself after that. And I think that type of stuff should be, in my opinion, in like aggressive moderation. And then anytime you have like silent time, I think feeding yourself with things that are things you want to learn. I think the like the books and stuff that I had just listed on the Audible, I think is really good. If you have uh, an online business, Typically, like what I do is I'll split up my uh, attention. So at night we do some more like spiritual, esoteric, physical universe type stuff. And in the morning, what I'll do is more like practical kind of business type stuff. So my morning would be like, I just finished again, going through The Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham. Then I pretty much have all of Dan Kennedy's books on repeat. So The No BS Guide to Brand Building by Direct Response, No BS Direct Marketing, The Ultimate Sales Letter, No BS Trust-Based Marketing, No BS Time Management for Entrepreneurs, No BS Ruthless Management of People and Profits. That you got it. That one's awesome. Then there's The Best of No BS, which is like a whole thing in and of itself. And yeah, things steal like an artist, the audio trilogy, no BS price strategy, building a story brand, cash advertising, the ad week copywriting handbook. I have just tons and tons of audio audiobooks on here. And I just open my phone and I tap on one and I'll just put it on speaker if I'm like doing something mindless. And if I'm doing something mindful, like copywriting or creating just on Spotify, I, I have just like ambient, almost spa type music going on that's just relaxing. And I just try to make sure that my state is being reasonably managed by as much as I can around me to reinforce my feelings, if you will. I'm always very mindful. It's almost like a habit at this point. If I go take a shower, right? Like I'll throw on an audiobook and just put the phone in the little like shower cubby so it doesn't get wet. And so I'm not sitting there for five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever that whole process is without 
consuming something usually. So I found that to be helpful. And I've also found that people tend to sink into consuming trash. If, if that seems helpful for you, then I would highly recommend giving it a go. Audible's great. I think it's fantastic. And I also think one last little pointer here is instead of consuming brand new books constantly, I find that by going through, I've probably listened to each one of Dan Kennedy's books at least three times, and there's at least a dozen of them. And so I'll go through and I'll, I'll hear something new each time that I go through a new book or a, a book that I've already read again and again. And it's just reminding myself of the basics of, and especially the books that I will read or listen to when times are like going really well in my business. I make a note of that. And if times kind of start going off the rails in the business or I start feeling uncertain, I'll go back to what was I listening to when times were going really well? What was I doing? How was I spending my time. And so like with Melissa, when she's feeling great, she's consuming stuff that is helpful for her, what she is interested in at that time. Right now, she's has no choice but to be interested in, in uh, being a good mom. And so she's started consuming stuff that kind of reinforces that and how to deal with the psychological effects of the hormones changing and so on, instead of watching people argue on some shitty dating show. Hopefully that helps you in some way. And I'm sure the YouTube algorithm is going to serve you up some other video right here. So make sure to click that. That might help you too. And we'll see you in the next one.